Hey everybody out there, my name is Dragnix and welcome to The Hunt. As top predators of the gaming industry, raptors are always looking for their next me, I mean game to sink our teeth into and enjoy. Whether it be the T-Rex, a AAA title brought down by a herd of us, piece by piece to enjoy, or the wonderful appetizer of a human, an indie game, that will keep us full for the time being. The thrill of the hunt is an experience in and of itself, as you hope that your next prey is a delicious morsel, rather than the stuff you get at McDonald's. This segment, which will be reoccurring on Mondays, highlights the games played during the creator during that week that follow a certain set of criteria. Either they were released new in some form, whether it be a new on Steam or ported over in some fashion to a new platform. They can also have a significant update that changed their gameplay in some way, adding a key feature of gameplay mode, or something significant in terms of their newsworthiness or draw attention to them, like a sale or being included in the Humble Bundle. Hunts need to be efficient, so each segment will generally only be a minute and a maximum two minutes long, going over briefly the gameplay and the first impressions taken out of it. Consider it a set of appetizers for your viewing pleasure, enough to get you interested. But for more detailed information on certain titles, you'll be able to look at the description below to get more information. But enough talk. Let us hunt. Go Scurry. Think of a ramped up version of Temple Run, being more difficult and playing around with expectations. Included is a cool set of music mixed in with great controls, but the question comes whether the variety of gameplay that it may offer would be able to hold you for a sustained amount of time. It's simpler and better here, with the difficulty changes actually making gameplay differences in how you take on the course, which was appreciated. It plays with the hazards and the position of the camera in higher difficulties to mix gameplay up. The ability to influence the score multiplier with the cost of speeding up adds a gambling element, because speeding up can really affect the timing of dodging traps and the amount of leeway for dodging a trap is very, very small. It's the kind of frustration game that can be satisfying, or may end up with you smashing your keyboard in frustration. Great pickup for those who love the genre or brutally based score based games, because even when you're fighting the leaderboards in terms of score, this game is punishingly difficult. Jump Jet Rex A new speed platformer that launched into early access, with the best species leading a charge through a variety of levels and reactionary gameplay. Controls are solid, with reasons to replay levels over and over again, to eke out more seconds off as you race your friends and the clock for the fastest time. Combine that with a couple of good boss battles, in addition to a good variety of levels, and you have an early access game that looks promising and actually relatively bug free. The only thing that it's missing is full content, in particular the number of levels. But based on the quality for the game up to this point, it'll be a game to take a look at for the next coming weeks and seeing how it develops along the way. And come on, it's a gosh darn dinosaur with a cyborg eye with rocket propelled boots. You're telling me that's not a game of the year candidate? War the Game, an RTS that has a really off-putting control scheme and bad set of tutorials to play in context of clicking around during gameplay without really knowing what's going on. It's a problem when you're teaching combat mechanics several missions after you've done the combat in question. This game is only going to be for the most hardcore of RTS fans, as the brutal difficulty and just plain terrible UI offsets a game that may remind some of DEF CON and some interesting visuals. While it is a numbers game, as in an infantry has the same fighting power as an armored vehicle, it's movement that makes the difference in this game. You can purchase resources in several maps, however it takes a bit of time for them to come to creation. Tack down the fact that there only seems to be one optimal strategy in order to deal with some of the maps and it doesn't allow for the creativity that RTS games could be known for. Again, the main problem with this game is controls, with a wonky control system that seems unnatural and doesn't use the keyboard and mouse very effectively in order to order your troops around. If you put the effort in, this game may be worth it, but I couldn't get past the initial experience in order to possibly enjoy it. It takes place in the modern world, but this game feels like it needed more time before it came out to the masses. Song of the Myrne, What Lies Beneath. A good action RPG at the 8-bit level, which has a timing and context-based sense of humor that makes it draw you into the avenging of the death of your bunny wife. Yes, bunny wife, you heard me. Has a cool crafting system that reminds me a tiny bit of Skyrim, and the leveling system changes things a bit as you have to actually choose between stats and skills. It is missing elements that would be appreciated in terms of information, like being able to look at stats you haven't seen before to know exactly what they do, and some will be off put by the old school RPG adventuring model, where you use context clues and information rather than a waypoint to get to place to place, possibly getting yourself lost in the process. The game is hard and easy at the same 
same time, as tiny learning curves may make certain battles difficult if you don't see how to deal with them. While not doing anything unique in the action part of the action RPG portion, for those dying for an RPG experience at the moment, it may be worth the five bucks that it's currently at. Cahors Sunset. Take an old Frenchman through the last years of his life and make the decisions that will do the best for his overall well-being in the visual novel life simulator. While the mechanic is very, very basic, if you like personal stories, and in which this one seems to be a tribute one, although I'm not saying that it is, about people, this may be up your alley for the dollar and change that it will cost you to get it. Again, nothing gameplay bending here, but it is interesting to see how far you can make it balancing the different stats and the random events that occur. Gun Slugs 2. Take Metal Slug 3, put in worse graphics, take away a bit of the challenge, and you get Gun Slugs 2 in a nutshell. It's a game where you can literally at times press right and shoot and get through a level, and for someone looking for a challenge on the hunt, it was severely disappointing. There's some different guns and some different characters, but really most of them play relatively the same, and it's just lacking in any sort of real pull for me to keep playing it. Added in a particular level that just annoys rather than try something new, and visuals that don't really do the job for me in terms of what's going on, and you have a game that lacks impact for the player in terms of seemingly missing sounds and just plain disappointing gameplay all around. I will give it this, it does remind me of why I love the Metal Slug series so much. It's a game that I can't even recommend for lovers of the genre. Ascendant. It's here because of the Humble Bundle Weekly Brawlers Pack, and it's a game that was seemingly horribly overlooked because I'm starting to get addicted to it. It's a great mix of intelligent oriented gameplay where health is scarce enough to make hits against you really make a difference and rewards you for intelligent blocking and appropriate use of skills in times of battle. Mix in a variety of roguelike elements to improve your character during your runs and a reasonable difficulty and you've got a game that I'll be playing for months to come honestly. Now note, I have an addiction to roguelites and roguelikes but I feel this game does stand out for me in terms of its quality. The art style is vibrant and really draws in my attention while still being appropriate to the combat that is going on. It's in the second tier of the bundle, but it's most definitely worth it. Double Dragon Neon. It's in the third tier of the Humble Bundle this week, and if you haven't picked up the game yet, you probably should. A modern day version of the classic beat em up, the enhancements don't only go to the graphics in this beautiful and upbeat game, but you mix in new elements of powers and equipables in the form of cassettes and take the base beat the crap out of the enemy gameplay with solid control and hitboxes, and you've got a game that's worth playing repeatedly. Every element of this game is on top of its genre, as the music is high tempo and easy to listen to, while the environment and elements are easy to look at and mix in some fun characters and an enemy that's actually funny and interesting to listen to, and you've got a game that's well worth your $8 it took to unlock it. You'll be playing it repeatedly, like I said. Hey everybody, my name is Sean Joy, aka Dragnix, and I thank you for watching. If you do like this video, hit that like button, and if you do want more content like this from Tech Raptor, hit that subscribe button. I will be doing content for Tech Raptor on Mondays and Thursdays video-wise, and then doing the rest of the week on the video on my own channel. Thank you for watching, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Also, play more games. Needs more games.